Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Lord of Life Moving Church. Um, big announcement was yesterday's Relay for Life, which was really which was really um, well attended by, by our people and uh, it had a lot of people there. It was a really hot day and still the people were out there, so that was great. And it's not, it's not any kind of virtual fundraiser even through Real Life for Life. It can be that way, but it's just a way of remembering all those who have gone before. And so to see the names of, of people like Dave Tash uh, um, was really good. And it's only those who have dealt with cancer, so it's not everybody who's died. Um, so that was really good to be um, be there and be a part of it. And thanks for all those who were there walking or um, peopling, not manning, peopling the, the booth that we had. Any other announcements? I hear tell there's a men's group meeting this Friday. Yeah, we have a men's group meeting Friday at 7 in uh, right. the fellowship hall. Okay. And I, um, I, I suspect the ladies are not going out. Unless some ladies want to kind of coordinate that, yeah, I, I not not our not the men's responsibility. Not <laughs> to the ladies. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so we'll begin our worship with the confession and forgiveness, which is found on the first page of your bulletin. You may stand if you're able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the man from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there's always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Amen. The first hymn is 647, Glorious Things of You Are Spoken.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of glory and mercy. From God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace and peace be with you all. And also with you. body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling. 
one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ. Word of God, word of life.
His disciples get in a boat. He's not with them. But then he shows up on the water when the, when the disciples were frightened by a storm. And we're told by scripture, we have some, some knowledge that was three to four miles out onto the lake or the Sea of Galilee. He disappears again. And the crowd finds him this time, just as our text begins. So what, are the, what does he say to them when they find him? He says, first of all, you have not come here because you have not come here because you want a blessing from me or anything like that. But you have come here because you ate your fill of the loaves earlier when they fed the 5,000, and you want more. Those are my words, not scripture's words. But he was saying that they didn't get the real meaning of why they would be there. And frequently in scripture, bread that is eaten is described, and we see it in almost every other, each one of the lessons. We're talking about bread. When we go back to our simple suppers, which might, might hope will be the Advent um, season in December, when we have midweek worships as well, many of you remember that I would get raised when I would get red, rosemary bread from Costco. But there could be more simple breads too, because our simple suppers are all about bread and soup, usually. So we have different styles of bread. Some could be more fancy, some could be not. Scripture never tells us what kind of bread is being talked about. It would probably have been very simple. Part of the news about that came out this past week was about the franchise Subway, which is one of the biggest franchises, I think, in the world. <coughs> and it's been told that Subway in England, or at least Ireland, the government of Ireland, the Supreme Court of Ireland, does not consider the bread that Sub Subway uses as bread. So a definition of bread is something that is just water and flour, and you mix it up, and you have bread. So when I was doing my ration challenge, that was my bread. I would mix up flour and water, and that was my ration of bread. And it was a really small ration, as you all know. Simple definition. But bread's usually a, a staple food that's prepared from flour and dough, and then we have to put in something and jazz it up. But that's probably not the bread that they were having in Jesus' time. But no matter what, Bread has always been a prominent food in large parts of the world. And usually when, if there's any food that someone's going to get, it's going to start with bread. Now the reason why Ireland said that Subway bread was not bread is because there was too much sugar. It was too sugary. It's supposed to be just water and flour. So for Jesus, the issue of bread was not in the sugar content. But the issue for Jesus about bread was that it is bread that we make, that we bake in our ovens, that we knead, K-N-E-A-D-E, -E, that we knead in our bowls, and so it is human-made, made. And after a time, if it's left out, it will perish. I'll make it moldy on the way there, too. But it said Jesus says, Jesus says we need to go to the food, go for the food which endures for eternal life. And he calls that bread, and then calls himself that he is the one as the Son of Man who will give it to you. And that Jesus is the one who is the bread of life. And to go on even further, he says that he has the seal of the Father in heaven to that role, to that task. That the Father has put a stamp on him. Now, yesterday, of course, the real life for life had nothing to do with bread. But it had all to do with those people who had imbibed with the bread of life throughout, or have been a part of the bread of life throughout their lives. I've already mentioned Dave and others that were out there. It would be the ones that had also only died from cancer, though. So Mary Jo, was, um, her name was out there as well. But they've all been part of the bread of life as we then come to the table, the table of the Lord to receive that again. Now the crowd wasn't buying it, that Jesus was the bread of, or that, that the bread that Jesus was talking about was important. Even when he said that it would come from, from God the Father and that it has God's seal on it. 
And so the people that are all around them ask, well, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? And Jesus says a simple answer. He said, this is the work of God, that you may believe in him whom God has sent. The crowd doesn't really buy this either. Tough crowd. They demanded a sign. And they referred back to the Old Testament when the people were given manna from heaven. And it could have been made up of Jews, this crowd, Gentiles, this crowd, even foreigners. But what is in general is that this was a tough crowd to please. So when they were asking him for a sign, Jesus reminds them where the bread from heaven came from. He says that bread from heaven that came to the Israelites as manna in the wilderness, that didn't came from, come from Moses, it didn't originate with him, but it originated with God. He gave the people of the Old Testament times bread from heaven. Similarly, when we receive the bread of communion, I am the one that physically is giving you that bread and saying the body of Christ, but it's God who provides it for you. It will be just like the manna of the Old Testament. If it were not for the fact that God has given it to us in the form of his son, whose body, the true body, was broken for us. So Jesus is simply distinguishing between the perishable food called bread and the bread that sustains life for a lifetime, eternally. So we can distinguish them that the bread, that, the bread of life, Jesus is with a capital B, the normal bread, just water and flour, is small case B. So we see that manna was given by God through Moses in the wilderness, but again, it came from God. And that kept the Israelites strong for their journey. And there are loaves and loaves and fishes that sustained the multitude before this lesson, not too far before the lesson. To sustain the multitudes of the people that followed Jesus around. And then finally now, at the end of this gospel text, they, those, that same multitude finds out that this Jesus is the bread of life, life eternal. And he's the one who gives us life both now and forever. Not just through the bread we, we receive in the Eucharist, but the Word, capital W, Word, which makes that bread come to life in us, both now and eternally, when we ingest it. When I say that this is, the, this is Christ's body given for you, then you are receiving this body, and you are receiving the bread of life. Two places in the Old Testament, God's Word is described as being eaten. The prophet Jeremiah said, your words were found, God, and I ate them. And your words became to me a joy and delight of my heart. The prophet makes the words a food which brings about a healthy diet because it gives, us, it gives them spiritual sustenance. The other great prophet of the Old Testament, Ezekiel, says, Open your mouth, or God says to Ezekiel, open your mouth and eat the words I give you. A few verses later, God also says to him, eat what is given to you. Eat the scroll on which the words are written, and go, speak to the house of Israel. All this is dramatically saying that those prophets are taking in God's word. In this case, in our case in the, in the gospel lesson, taking in the God's word about the bread of life, his son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> so toward the end of the gospel lesson, it seems like that multitude is finally getting it. This bread which was given to the 5,000, that was great, but it only sustained them physically. It was nothing compared to the bread which comes down from heaven. The bread which the Irish Supreme Court says was not bread at all, the bread of the Subway subs, which by the way, I do like a lot, so I don't care if they don't consider it bread. But the bread which the Irish Supreme Court says is not bread at all, that is not significant either. Because that's bread that comes from a man, a person, kneading the bread by human hands and then putting it in an oven and baking it. Even bread that fulfills the definition of bread be it pita bread, nan, or the rosemary bread that I usually bring for the simple suppers. That has nothing 
nothing on the bread which comes from, comes down to us from heaven. Because why? That bread gives life to the world. So we think the, God, the crowd then gets it at the end. Because the crowd says to Jesus, give us this bread always. And this is one of the times when we should follow the crowd also. And join the crowd in saying, give us this bread always. Give us this bread today. Give us this bread next Sunday. Give us this bread always in our life with you as we live our lives throughout the week. Give us this bread of life because I think you'll all agree it will be great to, as Jesus says, never be hungry and never be thirsty. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The hymn of the day is 480, O Bread of Life from Heaven. You may stand if you're ready. church, the world, and all of creation. You call your church to be the body of Christ. Awaken all the baptized to the gifts you provide for carrying out the work of ministry. Where the church is divided, knit us together, and restore the unity of faith. Hear us, O God. You command the clouds above, and cause the wind to blow in the heavens. Watch over deserts and wilderness places. 
regenerate rain rainforests, defend species at risk of extinction, and strengthen the work of conservation organizations. Hear us, O God. Mercy is great. You summon leaders to respond to the needs of your people. Install those, instill those who govern with patience when confronted with grievances and perseverance in seeking what promotes the well-being of the community. Hear us, O God. You draw near to those who cry out for help. Feed those who are hungry. Reassure those who are despairing. And accompany those who are imprisoned. Rain down the true bread of life from heaven that gives life to the world. Hear us, O God. You receive all who come seeking a sign of grace. Make this congregation a place of hospitality for those who custom to rejection. To those who have felt excluded here or elsewhere, prepare us to welcome them in the name of Christ. Hear us, O God. You provide food that endures for eternal life. Sustain us each day with the bread of life until we are gathered with all the saints and feast together at your heavenly banquet. Hear us, O oh God. We pray for all those on the whiteboard who are sick or shut in. Especially we remember this day, Joan, Blanca, Karen, John, Barbara, Roxy, Paul, Sandy, Shannon, Robin, Ingrid, David, John, Jane, Bob, Shirley, Carol, Tom, Peggy, Stephanie, Julie, Eric, Denise, Dennis, David, Kevin. By your mercy, if it is your will, give them healing, and most importantly, to continue to give them strength in their lives and in their chronic illnesses or whatever illness they be, may be encountering. Hear us, O oh God. We pray also for the families who are mourning, especially the man, uh, families of Dave and Christine. We ask that you would give them a sense of the sure and certain hope of the resurrection so that they may be comforted by you and supported by your family here at Order of Life Lutheran Church. Hear us, O oh God. We lift these up and all our prayers to you, O oh God, confident in the promise of your saving love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled. May his peace be with you always. You may share the greeting of peace, socially distanced. <laughs>
bread of life. You have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the witness of the saints, you show us the hope of our calling and strengthen us to run this race set before us, that we may delight in your mercy and rejoice with, you, with them in glory. And so with David and Christine and all the saints, with the choirs of angels and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. And gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trust them against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God invites you to the table of bounty. Come, the banquet is ready. Amen. You may be seated.
able. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen us and preserve us with his grace and peace. Amen.
apologize again because I was once again late for church, but I did have an announcement I wanted to make about Relay for Life. Thank you so much for so many members of the congregation participated this year. It makes it better when that happens. We raised over $1,500 for our team. Thank you. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thank, Thank you, God. God.